Hi, Francesca here, and I just want to say how happy I am to see you, that this is kind of a ninja <laughs> surprise live video. I didn't uh, promote it, but I just want to say hello. And that what I'm thinking about today, as I get close to my 60th birthday, or my 60th as I say, is aging. And so many women and men have so many issues about aging. Aging is a curse, aging is a problem, or I never want to age, or I want to live forever, or some version of just having so much of a, of a fear, I feel, in many people about the process of aging that eventually leads to death. Uh, no one gets out of here alive. And for myself, I feel such peace and such joy and such juiciness about aging. And people are asking me, like, how do I do that? Like, how do I actually embrace aging? How do I have fun with aging? How do I feel calm about the whole process and out to the other side? And and I just want to say hi. <laughs> hi, Mike. Hi, Lily. Um, and if you have questions, please feel free to ask me. But one of the things that is, is one of my secrets is to literally be thinking, how can I make friends with aging? How can I be good at aging? Because I'm going to spend my whole life doing it. And if I make aging an enemy, well, then I'm going to spend my whole life with an enemy. Well, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? I don't want to live my whole life with an enemy. I would rather live my whole life with a friend. So how do I make aging a friend? Just that question starts to shift something for me. Uh, I believe that our lives are formed by the questions we ask. Our lives are formed by the questions we ask. So if I say, how can I stop aging or how can I get rid of aging? Um, I might hear certain answers, but if I say, how can I make a friend of aging and how can I have empowered aging? I'm going to get different answers. So just starting to ask that question is the beginning. Now, another thing for me is, and I love this, is to really start to research and collect Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> to collect people that are older than you that inspire you and that you think are doing aging well. And we can collect them in the present, so they're people that are alive, or we can collect them from the past. It doesn't matter whether they're alive or dead. All that matters is that they're older than you are <laughs> and you find them inspiring. So I'm going to share just a couple of my favorites. And we'll be doing this, I think, again at some point, but a couple of my favorites are, um, oh, someone just said, I'm someone that's older than them that inspires me. <laughs> oh, I'll breathe that in. <sighs> I felt good, thank you. And, uh, and then one of my favorites is Jenny Churchill. Well, who's Jenny Churchill? Perhaps you've heard of Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill, who was the prime minister in England during World War II. Winston Churchill, who said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Winston Churchill, who was an inspiration. It was under Winston Churchill that the OSS, the Overseas Secret Service, got created, which eventually became the uh, the uh, British Secret Service. It was under him that that got created. And his mother was Jenny Churchill. Jenny was actually American. Jenny, um, this was in the 1890s that she came to England. And she was part of what became known as the Buccaneers, which is a great PBS series I highly recommend, which is about the wealthy, a nouveau riche, the new rich of America in the late 1800s, who went to London to uh, 
get a little panache, to get a little style, and to also get married to British royalty. At that time, British royalty had lots of royalty, but no money. And Americans had lots of money, but not a lot of elegance. And this partnership created Jenny Churchill, who married Lord Randolph, who created Winston Churchill. Jenny, in her 40s, started a magazine. Jenny was a lover of King Edward. Jenny had a, uh, a tattoo of a snake around her wrist. And Jenny had her second or third husband in her 60s, who was in his 40s. Well, of course, entering my 60s, I think of Jenny as a great role model. And there are uh, books about her, there are pictures about her. And if Jenny could be as sassy, sensual, empowered, outside the box woman in the 1890s, well then certainly we can do that now. So we start to collect these people that inspire us and show us that it can be done. And if even, hi Eric, if it can even be done for one person, so even if one person can do it, that shows it's possible. It shows that it's possible for you. So I have a client that I'll be going to right now, someone from New York, shout out to New York. <laughs> and I just wanted to say that I'm thinking about you and I am sending you luscious energy from the San Francisco Bay Area and the luscious positive possibility of empowered aging. Mwah. Bye.